Hey, what's going on folks? Alec back here with another video and today we're going to be doing the Guitar Hero and Rock Band tier list. Uh, this is probably one you guys have been curious about this whole time. I think I've gathered enough knowledge about these games so that I can properly rank them. This is my opinion. I've been playing these games since 2005 when the first Guitar Hero game came out on PlayStation 2. So I feel like, you know, I'm in a good place to be ranking them. Hey everybody, this video is sponsored by Asphalt 9 Legends. Asphalt 9 Legends is a free to download arcade racing game on PC, Xbox, and mobile. You can truly play anywhere. And to be honest, in my lifetime, I didn't think I'd ever have access to a game that looks and plays as well as Asphalt 9 Legends does. Like seriously, this footage that I'm showing you right here, this is on my phone. And these stunning visuals don't stop there. On Xbox Series X, it now supports 4K and 120 FPS. With over 140 40 cars to collect and over 900 solo career events to play in and you can race in over 180 plush tracks in 12 real world locations including san francisco osaka and cairo and also you can enjoy cross play and cross save between pc and xbox via xbox play anywhere to keep up and race against your friends in the biggest asphalt game yet you can download asphalt 9 right now using my link in the description thank you to asphalt 9 legends for sponsoring this video once again and now let's get back to it Let's begin. Okay, so since we're skipping Band Fuse Rock Legends, uh, we'll move on and look at the first one here, Band Hero DS. Now, Band Hero DS, I uh, I didn't play until 2020, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was 2020. Maybe it was 2019 when I played it. No, it was definitely 2020. Um, Band Hero DS is a completely different game compared to the you know regular Band Hero. Yeah, it's it's got family friendly pop songs. Maybe not family friendly, but it's got pop songs in it, you know, uh, of its time. I believe it was 2009 when this came out. And um, yeah, it, it was actually kind of a completely different game compared to the original Band Hero. There were like mini games that you could play while playing a song. I, um, I did a stream on this back in 2020 and there were some insane results. And, uh, you know, I I feel bad that I never actually got that highlight out because it was a pretty entertaining time. And it was very, very much worth the $35 that I spent on it. I'm serious. I'm serious. So this is actually going to go, like, up into, you know, we're going to put this in the B tier. Uh, we're going to put this in the B tier. Band Hero uh, DS was a great time. It was unique, and it was nothing I'd ever experienced before in any of the Hero games. It was a good refresh, uh, you know, like, and you could also play drums on there, which uh, you got to have this nifty adapter and put on your Nintendo DS Lite. Um yeah, but, you know, but guitar was business as usual. You know, you had the hand grip and you had to use the stylus pick. So, yeah, I mean, th that was fun. That was okay. Uh, but drums was pretty awesome. Band Hero goes into B. As for real Band Hero, um, this game came, yeah, this game came out, you know, alongside Lego Rock Band. And, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, some of the songs were a bit weaker on there, in my personal opinion. And, uh, you know, it also had some really, really shoddy censoring on there, too. I believe American Pie, every single chorus had the word whiskey censored. So it just kind of, you know, they, they definitely dialed it back. They wanted to make it, you know, family friendly. They had to compete with Lego Rock Band, you know, um, which honestly, in my opinion, Lego Rock Band had the superior set list compared to Band Hero. While you have the entirety of No Doubt, which Activision got sued over for putting them in there, um, you got Adam Levine and country Taylor Swift in there. So, I mean, you know, it's cool. Taylor Swift's in the game. The, I maybe, maybe the one redeeming part of this is that you could play previous games, exports and DLC, um, and stuff. And you can see all those other characters, all these celebrities playing, you know, like Metallica or something. You can actually get Taylor Swift to play Metallica. You can't get her to sing Metallica, but you can at least see her shredding on her acoustic guitar. Um, <laughs> some, uh, all nightmare long, you know, for band hero, for me, sadly, it's going to be a, a, a D the, the game game. I've only maybe played. I could count on, you know, both of these hands. Uh, how many times I've played it in my life and the game's been out for over 12 years now wow it, so if we're going in order you know like DJ Hero 2 and DJ Hero both of these games were really really good um you know DJ Hero did great and you know that that's it was good enough to spawn a sequel 
um, I remember the mixes in DJ Hero 1 being super nostalgic. I don't remember if there's an export or not. I think there was so that you could play them on DJ Hero 2. DJ Hero 2 had a much better engine. Activision kind of went in and made their own sort of beat mania type game. DJ Hero was a lot of fun and a lot of the remixes back then were really well received. Except for that weird Kanye West and Metallica one that was DLC, I believe. And look that up on your own time if you're curious. But yeah, DJ Hero 1 and 2, uh, honestly, yo, both of these games are A's for me. These are great. These are really good games. I should, I should really play them again. I know Customs got discussed Discovered, you know, back in 2019, I did a couple. I, I did a couple of customs on um, stream, but DJ Hero One and Two, good games. They're really good games. If they even, if it wasn't even uh, a part of the Hero brand, it would just would have been a pretty good rhythm game in general. But you know, it was clowned on in the beginning. I know DJ Hero One, you could uh, implement a guitar controller, and they had some guitar charts on there. That engine was ass, by the way. Uh, I have a video on that from like maybe five or six years ago. And go watch that it's pretty bad green day rock band okay so um now this is probably one of the like lesser well-received band dedicated games but i had a soft spot for green day you know and as a as a first and foremost you know musician drummer um i really really enjoyed this game's edition and uh maybe it didn't like fare well enough against you know like uh the beatles rock band you know the beatles you know they've been around for a long time and then green day i feel like I feel like they could have waited a little bit longer to make this game, but I guess in the in the time that it was made, I was really shocked that they're going with Green Day Rock Band. But I knew in my mind, you know, a couple minutes later after hearing about their announcement, I was like, "Yo, this game's gonna be a banger on drums." So this is also gonna go in the A tier for me. Um, yeah, no, maybe a bit higher than DJ Hero and DJ Hero 2, just because I've played a lot of Green Day Rock Band. I've played through the campaign, you know, I think I've played through the campaign on every single instrument. All right, Guitar Hero 1, the one that started it all. I have sunk an unreal amount of time in this game just because of how vastly different it is compared to all of the other Guitar Hero games. Now, I know a lot of you are probably, like, in the comments, probably just typing it up right now. Oh my god, the engine for Guitar Hero 1 sucked, you can't hit any of the notes. That's the point. They didn't really have anything to work off of other than pure inspiration from Guitar Freaks. Um, now, if you didn't know this, Guitar Hero 1, 2, and Rocks the 80s were created by Harmonix. So, and if you know who Harmonix is, they created the Rock Band series. So, um, but Guitar Hero 1 was where it all began, you know, it was bare bones, it was raw as shit, you know, every single song was a cover except for like the bonus songs, which we got a lot of sleeper gems in there. It had a really, really good set list, you know, some of the covers are a little bit laughable, but, you know, it had the charm of, you know, it just... Its goal of the game was, yeah, you get to pretend to be a rock star, you get to play some songs, and this is where I really discovered, um, you know, classic rock and my appreciation for the music, appreciation for music in general. So, Guitar Hero was really, you know, my awakening to all of that. So, and you know, it has some of the hardest FCs in the entire series. Now, going for a full game FC of Guitar Hero One is probably one of the hardest goals to ever accomplish if you ever decide to do a full series fc and i'm talking about you know just your the home console games so you know ps2 360 um you know just the regular five fret home console games guitar hero one is probably the hardest to go for and i i just i just did this last year i want to say a uh, a year and a month ago was when i finally full game fc guitar hero one it had been a goal i'd wanted for like 14 years at that point and um i just have an appreciation for this game and i love playing customs on here too as cursed as it is um i know the hammer on system you know wasn't fully fleshed out yet uh it kind of worked more like hammer ons on a real guitar hammer ons and pull-offs on a real guitar but um you know like i said they really had nothing to work off uh, work off of and a lot of the charts were nerfed thank god most of the charts were nerfed because that ace of spades outro would have been turbo shit on you know with the engine that we were given so but for me it's a spe there's a special place in my heart 
with Guitar Hero 1. So that's an S tier for me. Guitar Hero 2, S, all the way up here. Nope, no competition. Um, maybe no competition. I, I wanna say a couple of these games rival it. Guitar Hero 2 capitalized on everything that Guitar Hero 1 was missing. You know, the slow scroll speed, they finally had a hyperspeed cheat. Guitar Hero 2 also had working hammer-ons. It had a much better guitar controller with it. I remember that was the first time I felt frets that I actually really enjoyed using. Um, you know, the red and black SG. Sadly, I don't think I have a red and black SG anymore. I think it's at my parents' house, but I do have a red and white one, but that, that one didn't come out until uh, three in Aerosmith. Um, but yeah, Guitar Hero 2, fantastic. It had a gigantic set list. When Guitar Hero 1 had 49 songs, including the two secret ones, um, Guitar Hero 2 had a whopping 64. Now, this is also including the 360 version, which was beautiful. It came with the Explorer, and it came out on Xbox 360, uh, you know, I want to say eight months. No, no, no. A couple months later, after Guitar Hero 2 dropped, um, it came out for 360, and I was surprised. I was like, wow, they're really bringing Guitar Hero to 360, because the 360 was already out for almost a year at that point. Um, so I was still hanging back on PlayStation 2. I, everybody was all hanging back on PlayStation 2. Guitar Hero was not on any other system at this point. Um, but Guitar Hero 2, you know, you got classics. You got classics like, you know, Crazy On You, Them Bones, Message in a Bottle, Woman, uh, that really funny cover of, uh, Nirvana's Heart Shaped Box. Uh, you got Beast and the Harlot. <laughs> uh, War Pigs was legendary. You know, you got Cherry Pie, Surrender, you know, Jordan, um, institutionalized, legendary tracks, you know, um, less talk, more rock, right? Man, oh, six, all that remains, man. Yeah, no, I'm serious. Th this game had bangers, one of the most nostalgic track lists for me. But if I'm being honest, you know, like this is when the game started like really, really blowing up. But little did I know how much Guitar Hero was going to blow up because when we get over to Guitar Hero 3, oh man, this, this game just, it just changed everything, man. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll segue into that. I really like the timing window in Guitar Hero 2. Uh, like, I know Trogdor was a massive bitch when I was trying to grind it, you know, because it was the development oversight. You know, they didn't expect. I feel like, I feel like they thought people could strum that fast, but when they figured out the game doesn't let you strum that fast, they're just kind of like, they're quiet about it. So, you know, you know, the, the strum limit wasn't fixed until Rock Band 3 which is hilarious now that I think about it. It took them it took them damn near six years uh, to get it all fixed, right? Guitar Hero 2 felt perfect. I love that game. Uh, it was super hype when it came out. It's absolutely extremely high S for me. Uh, I love Guitar Hero 2. Now, Guitar Hero 3, this is, uh, you know, this is everybody's favorite. This is a really, you know, this was the gateway and a lot of people just got into the series because of this game and probably even stopped after playing three. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Guitar Hero 3 was jam freaking packed with content. I'm serious. Um, this is when it, you know, it, it was the second game released on the 360, first time on PS3. Uh, it came out on Wii, PlayStation 2. It was everywhere, man. And, uh, you know, the Les Paul came out, the Kramer came out. Um, you know, all, all of those instruments, you know, were legendary, you know, on, on release, the Les Paul felt fantastic once you broke it in. I know there was like the net connection issues, not only with the Les Paul, but you know, with the Kramer as well. Um, and yeah, no, and this was also the first time Guitar Hero got a home PC port, uh, ported by Aspire, um, which, you know, wasn't the best, but there's also an iteration of Guitar Hero 3 on Arcade. That's the version that you play when you play Guitar Hero Arcade, if you've ever seen one of these machines. Um, you got Guitar Hero 3 on there, pretty much. This was the first game to hit $1 billion in sales. Uh, Talk Dirty to Me, uh, Sunshine of Your Love, Barracuda, um, Reptilia, uh, The Seeker, When You Were Young, man. Uh, what was it? Holiday in Cambodia. Threes and Seven, Not to Sidonia, Raining Blood, Number of the Beast, One, Cliffs of Dover, Impulse, you know, even the bonus songs were fire too. Can't Be Saved, uh, Closer. There's a lot of songs in here that are extremely, extremely nostalgic for a ton of you, um, and myself as well. But the thing is, um, the amount of hours that I've put into this game is probably more than any of these. I was playing this game on the come up when I was starting my channel. The meta on Twitch and live streaming and content was playing a heavily, heavily modified version of Guitar Hero 3 on PC. 
And uh, I'll tell you, that version of the game was held by sticks and duct tape. And unfortunately, it really has affected my view on Guitar Hero 3 in general. Like, I've played the charts in the game so many times. I've played the songs in this game so many times. You know, like, Through the Fire and Flames is, like, the Guitar Hero song. And so you can only imagine how many times, you know, like, I still get people to this day, you know, asking for Through the Fire and Flames. And I'm just like, I've FC'd this, like, a hundred times. I'm not even kidding. The Guitar Hero 3 version doesn't matter what game, you know, Clone Hero or Guitar Hero 3 um you know guitar 3 pc whatever i've ever seen that song like easily a hundred times i had to have at this point but that's not to say you know all of the friends and all the people that i've met through playing guitar 3 and making videos on it back in the day you could still see on my channel back in 2007 i was making guitar 3 videos seriously like the the ps2 version and the 360 version were the ones that i played the most personally you know i did have the wii version at some point um but you know PlayStation 2 and 360 for uh, Guitar Hero 3 were the ones I played the most. When my 360 red ringed, I legit, I was like, Dad, I have to rent Guitar Hero 3 on PS2. I cannot, like, you know, I cannot get enough of this game. And, you know, back when Blockbuster was a thing, right, I'd go rent Guitar Hero 3 from Blockbuster. I still had my guitars whatnot, played it on PS2 for a bit. That version of the game is ass. It really is ass compared to 360 and PS3. But, yeah. But unfortunately, you know, with me streaming an ungodly amount of times, you know, the timing window for the game, it definitely made it extremely easy to pick up. But, you know, you know, like how people do like slide spamming and stuff now and spamming in general, this game, this game timing window directly influenced, you know, the very casual hit window. Um, and, you know, and, and a lot of people don't know this. This game was built off of a skateboarding game engine. Uh, Tony Hawk's Proving Ground, which is like the Underground 3 engine, uh, as it's said in the files. This is the first time Guitar Hero 3 wasn't made by Harmonix. They actually, uh, they actually hired on Tony Hawk developers Neversoft to work on Guitar Hero 3. But that's not to say that, you know, the soundtrack wasn't banging. The charts in here definitely didn't age well. You know, chord fests and, you know, the whole entirety of, like, Tier 7. You know, before I forget being really jank, you know, Prayer of the Refugee being one of the worst charts I've ever played, ever. Um, just a lot of stuff that didn't make sense. The, the you know, like some of the, the chord solo in When You Were Young, you know, just in the over the overabundance of triple chords in this game you know, it just wasn't needed but at least it set a premise for a lot of customs too and um yeah it kind of it kind of spiced things up a little bit for the community at the time you know for me it's got to be like a mid-tier a mid-tier a you know it, it's guitar Hero 3 has got to go down there for me um that's not to say you know y'all can't enjoy this game this game was really good i've just been very very overexposed to it uh you know as a content creator and you know just overall as a guitar hero player in general guitar hero 5 guitar hero 5 is like one of my favorites and you know it's it's kind of surprising to a lot of people um you know guitar hero 5 was their was their first take like a family friendly game you know it had drums bass and vocals and whatnot it also had this party mode which was really cool which allowed you to play guitar on like you could have more than one guitarist on multiplayer, which was super sick because w when you were playing like Guitar Hero World Tour, you would force one person on bass. And you know, not everybody wants to be be the one playing bass. Uh, you know, sometimes people just want to be the rock star. And so they want to play guitar. And um, this is the first time you could have like massive pro face offs, multiplayer, you know, I think you could have like, I want to say Guitar Hero 5, you could have up to eight people in a pro face-off, unless that was Warriors of Rock. I remember Warriors of Rock being huge. Um, but you could have a lot of people in a pro face-off, and it was sick. Guitar Hero 5's the set list was pretty damn good. It had Santana, it had Gorillaz, it had Beastie Boys, it had TV on the radio. Muse was on there again. It, it fell it fell away from like, hey, the Guitar Hero game is all about the guitarist and you know shredding and all that. This game this game was a lot more band oriented, and I think my experience in time with rock band games in general just sort of you know it, it pandered to what they were trying to do with this game, and uh, you know people drag on this game's timing window a lot. I played this game competitively, and to be completely honest, this one was one of my favorites. So. Um, this one is going to be, you know, it's going to be very much tied with Guitar Hero 3, maybe just a tad bit higher than Guitar Hero 3. Um, 
I liked Guitar Hero 5. It was a great game. And there was some pretty good DLC that came with it too. Um, I believe they had like a Queen pack, a Sum 41 pack. They had some other stuff. It was very rock band oriented and I think that's what won me over there. Guitar Hero rocks the 80s. This was, uh, this was a glorified, you know, expansion pack. I believe they charged $50 for it back in the day, which kind of a steep price for only 30 songs. And it was kind of at the peak of, uh, you know, it was still when Guitar Hero was like blowing up maybe not like you know super super blowing up but you know people were wanting more after guitar hero 2 dropped so um rocks the 80s came out a couple months before the th no actually i think it came out after guitar hero 2 on the 360 so it was a bit jarring for some people uh myself included i played the 360 version of guitar hero 2 got used to the really pretty visuals and um and then Rocks the 80s came out. Rocks the 80s, it had some pretty good songs on there, you know. It there's also some master tracks, you know, uh, but still mostly cover based like the first two Guitar Hero games. Extreme, Play With Me, I Ran, uh, Flock of Seagulls, bro. It had uh, Heat of the Moment, um, Shaken, Eddie Money. Bro, like a, a lot of these songs, you know, it, <laughs> this game, this game I actually bonded over with my dad because, you know, this is this is like his his music. And um, we played a lot of Rocks the 80s, so it has a really special place in my heart. I love Encore Rocks the 80s, and it would be like a very, very, it, it would be a disservice if I didn't rank it at least a low S. I love Rocks the 80s. It's just a lot of moments that I could cherish and, and look back on. And there's some bullshit in this game, too. Uh, because it's midnight, I actually got swapped out with I Want Candy. And uh, because I want candy for legal reasons, they had to pull the song from the game. But it eventually leaked out a couple years ago. No, last year. Yeah, instead we got Because It's Midnight, and that was the uh, Homestar Runner limousine song. And it was in the second tier. It threw everybody off because we were like, this is harder than Jordan. Why the, why the hell is this song in this game? Uh, and why is it in tier two of all places? And also not to mention Ballroom Blitz. That song is a fuckfest too. They overcharted the solo last second and it's a massive bitch to FC. If you could full game, full combo, Roxy 80s, like that, this, that, is, that accomplishment is no slouch at all. Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Now this was a follow-up right after Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. Now this is another uh, part of their spin-off series, much like Rocks the 80s, but instead of putting a like a 80s theme skin on it, uh, Aerosmith actually had all the band members, you know, fully 3D modeled, and they had you know uh, special venues dedicated to them, and a whole whole on storyline that you know just kind of paid like a great homage to the to the band and, you know and it's great for Aerosmith that that's the you know best band related thing to them to ever sell it sold more than all their albums you know and that's great for Aerosmith and all but I'm not the biggest Aerosmith fan so you know I I appreciate the direction that they're taking with this and um you know in this game they definitely did change the hit window you know how on Guitar Hero 3 I was talking about, it was very, very easy to pick up. A lot of stuff having to do with spamming and whatnot. You know, um, what, what was possible in Guitar Hero 3, they sort of nerfed and dumbed down in Guitar Hero Aerosmith. Um, but, you know, it, it sucks that there was no patch release for Guitar Hero 3 that had the Aerosmith engine. Or else, you know, maybe we wouldn't be spamming as much today. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. I'm not I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, Aerosmith, you know, they, they have a couple of good songs in there. But they don't have... I, I don't want to miss a thing in there. So um, this is going below Band Hero DS for me. Honestly, maybe it's going to go in the C tier. This game, uh, this game also had one of the worst fretboards ever. That Joe Perry fretboard. You can't see shit on there. I'm serious. But if you're a big Aerosmith fan, I, you know, if I was a big Aerosmith fan, I'd probably put this in low A. You know, if I liked them as much as Green Day, it may may have been a B plus or a low A. But yeah, that was, that that's Guitar Hero Aerosmith. All right, Guitar Hero Live. Uh, this is the 2015 reboot that came out on seventh gen consoles, and uh, it came out on the Xbox One and PS4, and the Wii U actually, um, and it also came out on iPhone. It was slated for an Android release, but I guess it never came out, uh, unfortunate. So Guitar Hero Live changed the entire formula of Guitar Hero back in 2015. Um, you know, it was a, maybe been five years since the last Guitar Hero game. Um, and I guess they had something going on with the developers of DJ Hero Freestyle Games. So they, being Activision, picked up Freestyle Games to make a, you know, 
mainline Guitar Hero game, and that was Guitar Hero Live. They changed up the formula entirely with the six frets, the three on top, the three on bottom. It was actually pretty damn fun. I didn't hate it. Um, I definitely thought it was weird at first, but I was welcome. I was ready to welcome for a change. Unfortunately, this game didn't support, you know, drums or like a five button legacy mode. Now, if it had like a five button legacy mode, I think a lot of our opinions on Guitar Hero Live would have changed, but they seemed pretty adamant on sticking with the three buttons on top, three buttons on bottom, six fret experience. Now, you could also call this game like a little bit more lifeless because, you know, you got these real ass FMV backgrounds, you know, it was it was kind of like, you know, the Sega Saturn and, you know, like, uh, you know, like Night Trap type shit where if you didn't do something in the game, then it would play a different video, you know, it uh, equating in a more realistic feel. But really, that just kind of came off as a very cheap, lifeless aesthetic to Guitar Hero Live. But um, it, it sort of gave birth to, you know, um, what we are used to seeing now in Clone Hero, which is like video backgrounds, because they had a they had their mode called Guitar Hero TV, GHTV, where you, you would have like um, in-game currency to purchase plays to play a song. Now I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure you know the microtransactions are also a gigantic turnoff for a lot of people. I personally wish that you know they'd come up with you know they came up with the battle pass model at that point cuz I think maybe Guitar Hero Live would have clinged on to life for just a little bit longer if they had a season pass uh, battle pass sort of thing. I'm, you know, I'm just saying this is back in 2015. I personally believe that Guitar Hero Live is overhated. I don't think that six fret is a bad mode to play. You can play it on Clone Hero right now, and the five fret charts actually auto convert down uh, to Guitar Hero Live mode, which is fantastic. So, um, and the whole and the whole catalog for GHTV and the on disc got backed up and converted to Clone Hero alongside you know unreleased stuff that was you know ready to come out, but. Uh, you know, ultimately didn't because Guitar Hero Live failed and and all the servers shut down. They they stopped giving people access to the servers in 2018, but apparently the servers are still live. It's just you can't log into it. But yeah, that I digress. Guitar Hero Live overhated. It's above Guitar Hero Aerosmith on the same level with Band Hero DS for me. Guitar Hero Metallica. This is a fan favorite. This is actually one of my favorites. And I know I have kind of strong opinions on Metallica. I, you know, uh, the memes, you know, sort of, sort of ruined all that shit for me. I felt like a lot of Metallica songs just started sounding the same after playing them all the time on streams and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I, I, had a, I had a big respect for the game after playing it again a couple months ago. I did a... Um, Expert Plus playthrough on drums, which I should probably continue because there's some songs that I missed. The guest acts in this game are fantastic. Uh, you know, compared to Aerosmith, I forgot to talk about the guest act. Uh, I'll keep it short, but the A Aerosmith guest acts were not bad. They had a couple of good ones. The ones that stuck out to me were all the young dudes, Dream Police, and, uh, you know, the Run DMC version of Walk This Way, but... Yeah, th there wasn't really much that I remember else about Aerosmith uh, and the guest acts in there. Oh, also, Guitar Hero Aerosmith has a really, really boring guitar battle. Guitar Hero Metallica, like, seriously, it, it really amped up the band experience, and this has some of the best full band moments in the series, in my opinion, next to Warriors of Rock. Um, you know, it's, it's just such a driving force on all instruments. You know, like, you got songs like All Nightmare Long and uh, Dyer's Eve, Master of Puppets on here, Enter Sandman, Battery, uh, Merciful Fate, Medley, and the guest acts on Metallica are fantastic. Also, you know, you got Kiss, you got King Diamond, you got Queen, you got uh, Bob Seger, Leonard Skinner. There's just so much. There's a lot in here that a lot of rock fans in general will love uh, about the series, and I'm I'm pretty sure it was it was probably the one that I was most excited about because it was going to be a really really big challenge on guitar, and I still haven't full game FC'd this game. Uh, I think I have one missing. Well, like like the the tap note engine on there is pretty cheeks because it, it was coming straight off of World Tour. They claimed to have fixed it, but it was still not great. Um, but you know, I should probably go back and try and FC one. So, you know, 
you know, despite my opinions on Metallica, like I actually have a soft spot for this game now. It's really good. Um, the the Expert Plus on this game is fantastic. Yeah, dude, Mastodon is in this game too. Blood and Thunder, fantastic. There's also Suicidal Tendencies, and they had a Social Distortion song that I didn't hate compared to Guitar Hero 3's story of my life. But yeah, this is overall a really, really good game. I like Guitar Hero Metallica and the attention to detail that they did, especially with the, the S&M stuff. It, it was really, really, really good. So yeah, for me, Guitar Hero Metallica, probably going to rank it just, uh, you know, just below Guitar Hero 3, above Green Day. I like it. I like it a lot. On tour decades, hopos were broken in this game, and my hand hurt. Uh, we're going to put this in D. Uh, modern Hits, same deal. Hand runs are actually broken in both of these games, Decades and Modern Hits. The timing windows are really, really bad in these games. I know it's fun to shit on the DS games, but... At the same time, I rank DS Band here up here. Even the ham rods are broken in this game, but you got drums. You even got vocals on here. Um, but, you know, I didn't necessarily enjoy these a lot at all. I really didn't. I think maybe the one takeaway was playing... Uh, was it Sweet Home Alabama that was on Decades? That was a fun solo, but at the same time, I was just really, really sad at how much... Uh, I was like genuinely so sad about how much uh, you know the game felt even more broken than it did before. At least with On Tour, I felt like the timing window was wide enough so that I can enjoy it. These DS games are locked at like 40 FPS, 30 FPS, so that's not ideal for these rhythm games, man. Um, Decade and Modern Hits, yeah, there's really nothing I could take away uh, that is you know super positive about it. My hand, my hand hurts just thinking about it. I was like, I was like this on my table for like two, three hours going and just slugging through the playlist even on like i'll probably just do it all, all these three right here i think maybe uh on tour would just go above band hero maybe it would actually go like you know on on par with aerosmith I, i'd say like on par with aerosmith maybe just a little bit lower than aerosmith i know on tour was you know a big a big hit with a lot of you guys uh you know because people probably didn't have home consoles they had the handhelds so ds and guitar hero was like no brainer nintendo was like let's do it Let, or, you know uh activision was like let's beat this cash cow to fucking death all right and uh and then you know it came out on there it had some pretty good songs here and there but the audio was just really really bad my favorite song out of all the ds games uh probably has to be heaven by lost lonely boys i'm sad it never got to see the light of day as dlc on any of these games felt like that was a giant missed opportunity because that's a good ass song smash hits this was uh this was a 50 dollars expansion game and it was even more pointless than rocks the 80s as much as i love rocks the 80s i felt like it was a thing that didn't need to be made i think 80s definitely could have benefited by being dlc for guitar Hero 2 on 360 but it would have left a lot of playstation 2 users in the dust so i understand them making the uh expansion pack spin-off game it, it, that early but Smash Hits, man, this was three games after, uh, Smash Hits, man, like what? This was, like, Guitar Hero 3, Aerosmith, World Tour, and Metallica had already came out. Why is Smash Hits a game? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I would have totally, 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 uh, liked more if this game just became part of Guitar Hero 5. Like, you know, they had, like, a whole pack of songs just for Guitar Hero 5 that were, like, greatest hits of the Guitar Hero games, and... I think it would have been much more wide received like and also you know two years after coming out like apparently smash hits means you know songs from you know barely two years ago through the fire and flames is on there raining blood is on there like it's like like rock and roll on night is on there it's like dude where's uh if you're gonna put full band stuff on there where's fcp remix where's impulse where's you know, uh, where's Jordan? And there's like a one Aerosmith song in there. I believe it was Back in the Saddle, which is a good choice, but it, that was the only song that it, it had like an Aerosmith insignia on it, indicating that it's from that game. And I was like, what? They like, <laughs> why put that in there? That's the only song that they were able to get for it. So I gotta say, some of the some of the charts, like they definitely had notes that were just off the off the snapping grid. Man, it just the note placement was just super awkward in some of these songs. Um, cause this was charted, uh, th most of the charts were by b -Nox. I, I'm gonna put this down with, uh, with Band Hero. Honestly, I'm putting it in the F, cause I, I hate this game's existence. It didn't need to be made. It, it just didn't need to be made. It had to, if it was DLC, then like, you know, it would have been much better. But as a standalone game, that just belongs in the gutter. Van Halen! Uh, this is a funny game because, you know, it has like that new gen logo on it. 
as you can see, the new gen logos were with, uh, uh, you know, Guitar Hero 5, Guitar Hero Wars Rock. It ran on a different engine, it is slightly newer and condensed all the user interface. It's more akin to what you see in Clone Hero gameplay. Um, that's, that's what Clone Hero gets their look from, but it, despite that, it was running on the World Tour engine, so, which was, the, you know, the same engine as, uh, World Tour, Metallica, and Smash Hits, it was all running off of that, and I believe this came out after Guitar Hero 5, because it got delayed for whatever reason. I believe, I, I believe that Van Halen wasn't even supposed to be, like, it wasn't supposed to be a band-centric game, it was meant to be, like, Guitar Hero Stadium Rock, featuring Van Halen. Van Halen was all 3D modeled in the game, but they didn't really have a story, I don't think. I, I don't really remember much if there's a story, but, uh... You know, a lot of the guest acts in this game didn't really make sense. You know, with Van Halen, uh, you know, we got Third Eye Blind, Kill Switch Engage. This is the first time we saw Alter Bridge, which was cool. Um, and there was like Weezer and uh, Queens of the Stone Age was on there. It's like, really, with Van Halen, interesting. Usually, usually the, the guest acts were, you know, direct inspirations for the main act of the band. So, like, so, I mean, this game is really weird. I'd still, I'd still think it, it was, uh, just slightly more enjoyable than Smash Hits. It's not my favorite. It's not the worst game ever. Um, it uh, Did it need to be made? Like, this is the one game that you can't export to the others because it was released late and they probably couldn't secure any of the licensing, you know, uh, so that it could be exported. So Guitar Hero Van Halen just lives on as its own regular game. And that being said, I mean, it's slightly better than Aerosmith. I enjoyed a lot of the drum tracks, like Lost Control, um, you know, Romeo Delight, uh, Ice Cream, Ice Cream Man, you know, those are all fun on, on guitar as well. Um, Hot for Teacher, fun on all instruments, you know, uh, Panama, you know, like it, it had some really, really good songs in there. Uh, and then Eruption, you know, Eruption was wanted in the series for a, a long, long, long time. And so finally getting to see it with the, you know, the Van Halen band members was really, really cool. So, um, I'd probably rank it, you know, honestly... Yeah, now that I think about it, I'd probably rank it up in a, up into a high B. Not my favorite, you know. I I, uh, I think some of the guest additions were whack, but like, yeah, I felt like there was just no, there, there was just no compromise in there. This was like one of the final Guitar Hero games, and uh, the final game that happened in that 2009 hell where they were releasing games every couple of months. And now moving on uh, to Warriors Rock, no question, this has one of the best set lists out of any Guitar Hero game. This game was just a straight up love letter from, you know, the developers of Guitar Hero to the fans and be like, yo, this is it. This is the one game we're going to have like all the best songs on here. And they were fucking right. You know, there's Chemical Warfare, Tick, Tick, Boom. There was three Megadeth songs in here. And one of them was like made. Uh, the one was actually tailored for release for the game, which was Sudden Death. Um, 13, their album didn't come out until a year later and it has a completely different mix. But the Warriors of Rock version, it went completely with the story. They went all out, super cringe mode with the story. But honestly, I don't care. It was some brutal legend and shit and it was awesome um they had 2112 the entirety of 2112 they may as well have made like a guitar hero rush segment out of that whole part of the game that 2112 shit was amazing every single venue in that was made with love and with close attention to detail and narrated by several different band members of rush I'm serious. If you want to go look at it, uh, I I recommend load, booting up Warriors of Rock and getting to the 2112 section. It's mind blowing. It's it's one of the most un underlooked areas. Maybe to me, is one of the most underlooked areas of any Guitar Hero game. Like it, it's just it, it's genius. It's genius. And then like they had the Warrior power ups and all that. You know, it, it brought a cool dynamic to the game where it was just like, hey, you could become super duper overpowered and you know all the stars that you get are going to go towards, you know, defeating the giant robot at the end. And, you know, it, just the visuals of the games are super mind blowing. And, you know, like it, and the game ends with like such an insane set list. You got Dillinger escape plan with setting fire to sleeping giants. You got the three Megadeth songs. Uh, what was it Holy Wars, this day we fight and sudden death was like the final boss song. Um, and then, and top it all off, there there was Black Widow of Laporte by uh, by John Five featuring Jim Root, and um, uh, I don't know if it's it's probably not like big common knowledge, but Black Widow was one of the, like the biggest custom songs back in 2006 for Guitar Hero 2. Like it was the hard custom song to play, 
everybody was like posting runs or you know watching runs of black widow i think if and like while the player base was super hardcore back then it, it would have garnered a lot of hype if somebody was grinding black widow laporte back in the day it was just it was that big beast of a song and the chart is no slouch on warriors of rock it was like one of the final fcs that i needed and not to mention it has fury of the storm by fucking dragon force in there are you fucking kidding me i want to say i fc'd that pretty close after the game came out because i had i had some uh pretty good experience with customs back then uh by the time warriors of rock came out and uh i think I, the one thing about it is that the engine was just it they they switched it up off of guitar hero 5 a bit and it's not my favorite it, you know like uh if there's there's a strum if there's a bunch of strum notes in a row like you actually have to hit above where the strike line of notes need to be in order for in order for you to actually like hit it and uh if there's a hammer on and then a strum right after you better be hitting as early as possible or else you know the game's just straight up not going to let you go it just it just felt super broken and if a a anyone's ever played warriors of rock um then you kind of know what i'm talking about I, I don't know if i could say the same for the wii version but for the ps3 and 360 version the hit window just feels super jank but that set list man that set list is really really fucking good and that's the reason why it's getting a low s for me um Warriors of Rock is up there just off of the set list and you know the aesthetic and storyline alone they really really went all out with it and I appreciate Warriors of Rock because of it now Guitar Hero World Tour Guitar Hero World Tour was the big budget big 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 budget Guitar Hero game on its own World Tour is pretty fucking insane this is fresh off of them you know uh, Guitar Hero was like on top of the world so they got Ozzy Osbourne with two songs they got his ass in the game they got Haley Williams she was blowing up too so with Paramore they got Misery Business like shortly after it came out it's fucking crazy they got Sting Billy Corgan they got they got Zach Wilde Ted Nugget they got sponsors out the ass they had a Guitar Hero meal at KFC that's how big this game was, man. That's how big it was. Oh, oh my God. The song selection for this game is ridiculous. They licensed fucking Tool for this game, man. Uh, a band up until that point, it had been like 14 years since they'd licensed their music. And so Tool, they they were like, they worked with Neversoft and Activision. They're like, yo, listen, uh, we're, we're not gonna have these silly 3D characters on stage playing our music. You're gonna design a venue just for us. And it was super trippy and fucking insane. Oh yeah, may I mention there was, they brought Jimi Hendrix back for from the dead you know, there's some mocap stuff in there this game had michael jackson in there that's what that's how you know that they had fuck you money they could license michael jackson to be on disc not even dlc um yeah and they even they even uh motion captured the moonwalk in there too system of a down with byob classic demolition man which was dope also they had paul mccartney and wings what else was in this bitch mars volta yeah this was a good set list this is a really really good set list and coming hot off of guitar Hero 3 it you know i used to hate this game in retrospect i used to hate this game mostly because a lot of the soundtrack was shared with rock band 2 but in hindsight as a game by itself world tour is one of the greatest i know i had a video on this channel at some point where i just sat on the menu and i bitched about guitar Hero world tour and i didn't even have an audience at that point to really um to really vent it all to i, I think it was because i was trying to fc satch boogie and i was getting pissed that the tap notes in the game were cheeks and which they were the slider notes in this game hardly worked they they barely worked i think you had to actually deliberately put your um you had to deliberately put your hit window to hit notes later so that it would work properly but you know that that's that's something that i figured out way later um and i eventually got a full game fc world tour and you know everything's all good now uh vocals in this game were kind of jank too uh, i remember it being very very hard to get 100 percent on literally any song unless it was uh no sleep till brooklyn or you know any song that was uh all you know speaking notes not not pitched at all but world tour aesthetically i know i i know it like kind of fed off of you know the the legends of rock the guitar Hero three legends of rock art style and all that but they definitely kind of dumped it down a bit i thought guitar Hero three looked a bit prettier than world tour songs and guest acts alone and you know all the cameos uh you know in the game guitar Hero world tour is pretty damn nice the the guitar is also it is one of my favorites despite the strum switches being super fucked up but that thing was beast for a long time and those frets were beast too that 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 kind of serviced in a little bit of the solace four runs in 2018 that's how long i had that guitar yeah world tour for me uh probably on par with warriors of rock yeah for sure this may be a bit lower 
but not honestly just tied with it world tour is a great game the drum set wasn't bad too it's better than rock band one's first drum set for sure lego motherfucking rock band that's what i'm talking about okay lego rock band okay um you know you know i said it was like it was the family friendly game um, so it came out alongside with Band Hero, which, you know, is cool and good and all. Uh, I think this had some of the more better song selections. And also it was just like, it was so funny. It, it was my favorite franchise. And then they just like kind of dropped the bomb. It was like, yeah, we're partnering up with Lego and we're making a game. And at this time it was like Lego Star Wars, Lego Harry Potter, Lego Indiana Jones, all that, yada, 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 a rock band game. What the hell? And so you were like, you were like getting studs and stuff uh, for getting like five stars. Lego rock band was pretty dope. I, I know a lot of people thought it, like it, it's like a meme shit posed game and like it kind of is. Is, but there are also like Lego cameos in this game. I remember at some point there were like dreamscapes game where you felt so inspired by being a band and playing all these songs that you would have like these uh, these dream gigs where you played as Blur or uh, or Queen in there and they were like little minifigure versions of like Damon Auburn uh, and and fucking uh, and fucking like Freddie Mercury and Brian May and all of them. It was really it was really funny. Uh, there there's Jimi Hendrix in this game. You got Kung Fu Fighting with Carl Douglas. There was uh, Supergrass. Grace was the opening song. It was really good. Hives Tick Tick Boom, which eventually ended up on Warriors of Rock, which is all good. Um, I think uh, there was Swing Swing. All American Rejects. Into Deep Sum 41. There, there was just a good amount of songs in Lego Rock Band. It was good. I, I like it. I, I think I'll put this in a, uh, you know, I'll put this right above Green Day Rock Band. Same same amount of appreciation that I uh, that I have for like Metallica in there. It was it was fun. It was it was a fun game, and uh, I will get the rest of that playthrough out sometime. I lost the project file, so that's why no Lego Rock Band episodes have come out since you know a couple months ago. Power Gig. This is going straight in the shitter. This is the worst game of the bunch. I'm being genuinely serious. You want to know why Guitar Hero guitars are really hard to find? It's because for a marketing stunt and attention, they uh, they decided to dump like a hundred plus guitars in a volcano as uh, you know their marketing scheme. And uh, this has one of the worst peripherals out of any of these games that I've ever played in my entire life. And that's not even including the guitar. They had a drum set where you did not get feedback for your hits. They called it air drums. You had these drumsticks with sensors in them and you would hit the air above the sensor and that would register hits. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They, they actually thought this was a good idea. And then the guitar instrument like is like they, they were they were more keen on getting the idea in kids heads be like yeah you know what you can enjoy these fake video games but you know what you should learn guitar too but honestly the whole six string thing just comes off as even more of a poser thing than giving us a plastic guitar with five buttons because then it's very obvious that it's a controller when we're using five buttons it's much much worse when you pretend to play an actual real life instrument by mimicking not even not even close to the right thing in game like it, they had a power strum mode which by the way only worked on specific firmwares of the xbox 360 my boy moose uh guitar hero rocks has a whole video on that um and, and like it, compared to the pro guitar mode on rock band 3 it just you're not learning. I guess a lot of I, I guess a lot of labels like kind of bought that excuse that hey, we're selling a real guitar to this. A lot of a lot more kids are gonna get into it. That's why we got three Eric Clapton songs in the game and a John Mayer song in there, and a uh, original. They have an original Black Label Society song in there. They also got Paramore. Uh, they got Cult of Personality in there, the original version, by the way. They got You're Gonna Go Far Kid by Offspring. They got some Rise Against Song. This game's storyline, you're reuniting the powers and you're coming together to defeat some evil force or some shit, I don't know. Or like Rock is dead and you gotta do some bullshit to bring everybody peace and come back together. I, I don't know. The story sucked. <laughs> There's also vocals in this game, which I don't really know. No, seriously, the, the guitar instrument, it just made it, it, it just sucked. It, it was just terrible. You can still play the game with a guitar or and or rock band guitar. Um, I don't remember the hit window being great. Uh, I think I also remember that this is the first time I saw open notes on guitar before uh, Guitar Your Live came out. And I'm talking about just like on the actual guitar solo tracks themselves. 
Um, cause like in, in world tour and beyond, uh, open notes were just for bass only rock band one. Okay. So rock band one, this is the game that got me into drums and becoming a drummer. This game has a lot of really good songs in there. You got Tom Sawyer. It's a cover, uh, but it's Tom Sawyer by rush green grass and high tides. One of my favorite songs out of the entire series. It's, it's great. Um, you know, you got Danny California, a lot of radio hits, you know, uh, of that time. Interestingly, they took out hyperspeed in rock band because um allegedly they they wanted people to just experience the music rather than just focus on hitting buttons or whatever but the drums in this game you know pretty pretty well fleshed out and uh they had the four pad drums it was a lot of fun uh bass had the six times multiplier because you know they, you're probably never playing chords on there the guitar charts are really fun and easy going probably not the hardest in the series probably one of the easiest in the series they they really 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 took all the best out of all instruments and they made a fantastic set list reptilia uh, by the Strokes, Celebrity Skin, uh, Black Hole Sun, Wave of Mutilation, Vaseline, Learn to Fly, Foo Fighters. You know, th there's there's some of my favorite tracks on here just to play on any instrument. Like, for real. It, it was a good experience. Um, I'd probably put this very, very high A. There's a lot of stuff that they needed to flesh out with this game. Um, but that's where Rock Band 2 comes in. And, you know, I'm just going to rank it right away. This is, like, one of my favorite games. Like, against the realms, you know, like shooters and you know rpgs and all these genres rock band 2 is like one of my favorite fucking games of all time they capitalize on everything that made rock band amazing and you know it i think it was very much like the community at the time and also a lot of the dlc that came out it was just such a it was such like a pure place to be all the songs that were coming out that were like difficult you know it would be super hyped on on youtube or whatever you know you would go online there'd always be somebody playing and you know sometimes there are still people playing rock band 2 to this day and um you know as 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 much as like the engine wasn't super fleshed out it had, it was like the best feeling engine by harmonics in a very very long time and like they added back in the hyper speed you know they they had battle of the bands um, where you and three other people could make a band and then just get high scores online and fight against other bands. And it was just a super, it, it was such a pure, it had such a pure competitive spirit about um, Rock Band 2 in general. Um, and, and, you know, it, not, and not being someone who is like really, really popular in that space at the time, I still posted videos and I still was like very much keeping up with all the dlc and stuff all the promotions and whatnot all the packs that were coming out every week all the full albums that came out um rock band 2 also has a like a really really awesome set list yeah you know like colony of birchman by mastodon um psycho killer by talking heads um cool for cats <laughs> by squeeze my own worst enemy by lit you know the donna's new kid in school uh, these are just ones that are off the top of my head. You know, Hello There, re-recording by Cheap Trick, um, Painkiller by Judas Priest, Panic Attack by Dream Theater, which is one of just the best full band songs ever. I don't even like I don't even like Dream Theater that much. I just think it's a really, really, really fun song on every instrument to play, and it just lends itself perfectly. Even if there's no double bass on the chart, it's just fun on every instrument guitar drums bass vocals there's always something for somebody to do in that song it's so good um lazy eye silver sun pickups give it all rise against just a super super solid set list and i can never ever 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 get tired of it i could pick this game up like now play it like it's nothing i love rock band 2 and i want to go back to it because oh god i just love this game <laughs> obviously obviously as far as content wise goes you know things that are offered in the game rock band sort of hit its peak and started slowing down rock band 3 it, it gave you guys pro drum if you don't know what pro drums is it's where it separates the cymbal hits from the tom uh hits and it and it actually feels 100 percent like real drums it, it's very very close to real drums rock band 3 also offered pro guitar and pro keys a first to the series and a la unfortunately a last to the series um, Pro Drums would appear later on in Rock Band 4, which was it was just pretty cool. It, it's like, thank God they added that. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get on to Rock Band 4 in a second. So Rock Band, Rock Band 3, they finally removed the strum limit. The, the engine maybe felt a little bit more on the jank side, kind of like Warriors of Rock. But, 
you know, it, the more people played it, the more tricks that they found to make the game a bit more playable. Um, I think my calibration on the game is like 30 audio, 35 video. Um, that's in milliseconds, by the way. And I play with zero latency monitor and headphones. So that should tell you how weird the, the game's hit window is, but that's how I feel comfortable on. Pro Drums, I spent a ton of time on Pro Drums. A lot of stuff on Rock Band Network, which was sort of like a, a official way to get custom songs on there. Meaning if you were a, if you were somebody that owned the rights and the licenses to a song, you could chart it yourself and sell it on Rock Band 3. Completely different from, you know, like GH Tunes, where you go into a virtual studio, make a song while charting it, and then uh, give it out to people for downloading. Rock Band 2 and 3 actually both had Rock Band Network, and they had 1.0 and 2.0 iterations of it, so that it would support, you know, pro keys and pro drums and whatnot. Rock Band 2 and 3, Rock Band 3 really hit it off with the Rock Band Network catalog. There's some really good stuff in there. There's a lot of, uh, great DLC in Rock Band 3. You know, the you know the, the Microsoft points were few and far between, but I was still able to get some DLC here and there. The set list, you know, it was pretty good. You know, there, there's Freebird, Leonard Skinner, there was uh, Doobie Brothers, uh, China Grove, Cold as Ice, Foreigner, uh, Combat Baby by Metric. There was uh, At the Drive-In, um, one Arm Scissor, which was on World Tour uh, a couple years prior. Walk of Life, there's Dire Straits. Um, there was Sister Christian by, uh, uh, oh God, who's this fucking band? Night Ranger, Night Ranger. Yeah. And, uh, it, it lent itself pretty nicely to, you know, like the pro keys, the pro drums, pro guitar and stuff. I haven't played a lot of pro guitar, but pro keys was a lot of fun. Yeah. There's like Beast and the Harlot. There was Before I Forget. It, it, it didn't fully pull away from just like the stuff you were used to seeing in the old Guitar Hero and Rock Band games. So like Rock Band 3, you know, just like based off of the features alone, you know, I'd probably, I'd probably rank this below Guitar Hero 2, maybe below Guitar Hero 1. Um, just because of like the, the, the engine on this game is still something that I have a little bit of gripes about, but at this point in time, the game has been out for 12 years, skill issue, but Hey, that's just me. And this also gave birth to customs on, uh, unmodded consoles. Thanks to the con exploit when, uh, Microsoft started allowing USBs to be read on Xbox 360. So rock band three is one of the easiest ways, uh, next to rock band two. Um, to get custom songs on an unmodded console. So Rock Band 4 is also on here. Um, I think I want to say, yeah, okay, Rivals is on here too. It's very interesting. So Release Rock Band 4, I didn't play Release Rock Band 4, but I had a bunch of friends who did. I kind of like the, the main set list on here. It wasn't too bad. It's pretty regarded as one of the worst set lists. I don't think so. This game has like White Denim, St. Vincent, uh, Lightning Bolt. I love Dream Genie. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Dream Genie is a great ass song. Yeah, no, it, al it also has, uh, yeah, there's Proto Men, Light Up the Night, which is a great song. I just started getting into Rock Band 4 again. After Rock Band 3, I believe it was just Harmonix and Mad Cats publishing the game. And uh, I remember the instruments not being too great for a lot of people. You know, the drums were dropping a lot of inputs and needed firmware updates. The guitar is actually surprisingly one of the better guitars that Rock Band has ever released. I, I also remember the game being very, very, very broken. There was a lot of software glitches, you know, solos repeating. There's also like a roll limit. Oh, that's one of the things I didn't like about Rock Band 3 also. There's a roll limit on Ion kits. I had an Ion drum set, which was like the electronic drum kit that they made specifically for Rock Band 2 for Wii 360 and PS3. And uh, I won a tournament for GH back in the day. And uh, I was world champion for Guitar Hero 5. And I used my winnings from that to buy an Ion drum kit for Rock Band 2 and 3, which was dope. Um, but yeah, go going back to Rock Band 4, there's also no practice mode or online play where whereas rock band one two and three had those games and and same with the beatles and green day um it was it was a really 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 interesting situation and a lot of people weren't happy um so rock band four was probably in the d range for a lot of people based off of maybe the maybe like two hours that i played the launch version before updating to rivals because once i uh, like i had an xbox one only after Rivals came out because of how, of all the bad things that I was hearing about Rock Band 4 on release. Um, I'm probably going to put release Rock Band 4 in a low D range. It just has too many, too many things that were missing in, uh, in this series on, 
launch and just a lot of problems a lot of broken things and they got clowned on a lot but thankfully moving on with rivals they redeemed themselves uh they they put online play behind a paywall but this was already in you know the new decade and so i guess unfortunately this was to be expected by um this is to be expected by some game companies at this point um surprisingly you know for what it's worth they're still supporting rock band rivals you know rock band 4 I i'm just gonna re refer to rock band rivals as you know its own game now because it's completely different from what rock band 4 is it started off as rock band 4 but now it's definitely rock band 4 rivals so yeah rivals when it dropped you know it, it had like the practice it finally added practice mode which is still a little bit jank but hey it works you know people were happy with it um there's there's also online and battle of the bands mode you could have a crew and you get it has like all the battle of the band stuff that i was talking about in rock band 2 they brought it back and uh, it's very it's still fairly active still fairly active and they do challenges and they still support this game to this day um rock band 4 came out in october of 2015 i believe it was october and it is currently march 2022 and rock band is still getting dlc rock band 4 is still getting dlc maybe i'll be at one to two songs a week at the very worst they're only getting one song a week but that's still very impressive on the contrary it's like yeah they might be trickle feeding but bro, that's still con that's still content. That's still content, you know, still being supported. They have like a their own season pass and, and and all that stuff. You get I think you could pay for a whole season and get all the DLC. The fact that this is still being supported and the game is like clinging for life. There are no peripherals for this game that you can get without spending upwards of $1000 for Xbox One. For PS4, on one hand, you could probably conjure up your own controller because of the PS4 and PS5. So controller support, like my Arduino guitars, like the Destroyer, actually works on PS4, Rock Band 4. And that's actually the reason why I'm starting to get a little bit more into Rock Band 4 lately. Um, you know, that, that'll work on PS4 and PS5. But uh, as for like drum sets and stuff, I think you, you got to get adapters out the ass if you want to get, uh, get it working on Xbox One. Uh, I believe the Mad Cat's wireless adapter is goes for like 200 bucks, 300 bucks now, and the PDP wired adapter is going upwards of like 1,200 fucking dollars. It's so fucked up. It's seriously fucked up. But um, yeah, like like they only sold them for a little bit in 2016 or early 2017. And, uh, you know, that those PDP adapters were like $9 at some point, but they haven't even been like reverse engineered because like, uh, you know, Microsoft Xbox controller authorization just still hasn't been cracked. It's just a, something that hasn't been cracked. And you're probably wondering like, hey, wh what if you use this adapter? You know, the, this Brook adapter, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, the ones that they use for fighting, fighting game. The game needing to know that it's a legacy 360 Xbox guitar, or Xbox drum set is just so under the cover and no one wants to look into it i hope somebody looks into it one day so that you know more people can play this game because as much as you know as much as i've probably dogged on the game in the past and rock band rivals man i feel like i feel like it's a low a for me it's actually a low a for me i don't i don't hate this game it might be like yeah no it's it's low a i don't mind this game it's just unfortunately finding instruments for it is just so so bad it's still getting content which i can really commend for it which man i'm thinking maybe i could just rank it a bit higher in that in that regard it's just like they really still have love for this game love i don't know how many people are still you know with harmonics that actually you know are putting out content you know members of the members of the development that worked on rock band two and one two and three are still doing rock band for rivals um you know still have a love for the game but rock band blitz rock band blitz um was actually a uh, it was an xbox live arcade and psn game and it closely followed the formula of harmonics first series entry into the music game series which was uh, Frequency and Amplitude. I believe Amp is the better game, I think. I think Frequency was the first one, Amp was the second one. Then they came out with Amp 2016. It's basically a game where you, you play all the tracks at once and it's very, very arcadey. You have two buttons on your controller and you get to switch between them. And your goal is just to get as much points as possible. It's a, it's a fun little arcadey, you know, thumb 
dumb diddly dumb game. <laughs> I don't know why I called it that. Uh, but it's, you know, you kind of just like twiddle your, twiddle your thumbs to the game. It's fun. I, you know, it, it just, it has like the Rock Band 3 assets and art style and all that. And uh, it's, it's really fun with all of the DLC because everything is supported. Everything that's been able to move through the games, Rock Band 1, 2, 3, and Rock Band Network and stuff is all able to be played. Um, and then you got all these power-ups and stuff, which unfortunately for people that don't have the time to move mountains to play this game anymore, um, the Rock Central servers for Rock Band Blitz are currently down, but thanks to modders, uh, you can actually still play this on RPCS3 via emulation, and you can play on a keyboard if you want to, which has been really fun. Um, you can enable the power-ups once again, just no leaderboards. Um, it's really weird that they required you to be online for the power-ups i feel like i feel like if somebody wanted to play this game offline just for fun you know they would appreciate having the power-ups but i believe these power-ups were also using up in-game currency that you got off of your performances of songs so i think uh that was also pretty weird and you know that that required you to be online too it's a pretty good game uh that's low a for me yeah it's vastly different than all of these but i still like playing that game it's fun rock band unplugged is also another uh game in the vein of the early harmonics games this time it didn't only have two it didn't have two lanes for hitting buttons or hitting notes uh instead you had four and this is probably one of my favorite ones to play and that's why i'm gonna rank it like i'm gonna rank it above uh i'm gonna rank it above blitz in between dj hero one and two Honestly, I had a really fun time playing through this game. It, it, it was released around the time of Rock Band 2. Rock Band Unplugged, you played, uh, you know, you had guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. And then you would you would play through a bunch of notes, and then there would be a big note at the end, which marked the end of uh, one track played. Then you'd switch to another. This game was fucking ruthless when it came to Gold Stars. When I did a playthrough of this, I believe it was two years ago, um, I had a hell of a time trying to get like four or five stars on shit gold stars were literally only rewarded by fc's it felt like it was really really fucking hard there's also some really really hard songs on here there was dlc for this game also um probably one of the best psp games in my opinion i know that's not really saying much i didn't really play much uh, of my psp it was a tony hawk machine and a luminous machine and then rock band unplugged came out i was like oh this is pretty fun highly recommend playing rock band unplugged if you you know want a taste of the you know old harmonics formula with the rock band aesthetic that you know and love it's really good i like unplugged it's good rock band vr <laughs> rock band vr was an oculus exclusive and it's a really really it's a really like big step backwards it's sort of just like a tech demo that they charged 40 dollars for I, I guess maybe to like showcase their engine and how well it responds to things you know how in rock band 4 i didn't mention this earlier but in rock band 4 they introduced this thing called freestyle solos and um it's really built around that gimmick they 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 really really just like developers of rock band said at this point and i quote it's not impressive to watch the best rock band players play rock band because when you're just pressing buttons it's the same thing over and over again and like basically what they're saying is like they wanted people to feel the music and experience the music and rock band vr was just that like the whole premise of that game was to do fake chord shapes on your on your guitar controller um to uh to woo a crowd and like you get star you get stars and have a score and their star power and stuff and there's no actual notes to play like you actually just had to either play double chords triple chords or you know four note chords and then do like a freestyle solo it was very much a freestyle game that was like you know kind of a tech demo for their you know to showcase their engine um, it had some pretty cool, it, you know, honestly, given what it's worth, it had a pretty cool experience like the first couple of times, but $40, I, I don't know, man. They did have a classic mode where you could just, it was standard like five fret guitar. It's like, I don't even know if you could play bass on there, but you couldn't play drums. There's no vocals. I mean, why would you? It's a VR game, but yeah, Rock Band VR, still better than Smash It. <laughs> Rock Revolution, this game, not good. Um, it was worse than release Rock Band 4, honestly. Uh, Rock Revolution this was developed by some companies but it was published by konami which you know was very surprising it was like it took them this this long to get into the into you know like the five fret rhythm game hype whatever you know these are these are these are the dudes who publish pop and music you know dance dance revolution you know the, you know the rhythm games the classics 
but it, it it still had like the it still had like the um you know it was the flat it, it was the flat board on the side and uh it was scrolling down looked really really fast and the game feel wasn't necessarily like the worst of its problems the worst of its problems is that it was still using covers after you know you know people were getting used to the master tracks they they got the dude who did guitar for we three kings and then went down to georgia steve we met and um he has a whole video talking about the nightmare that was recording the guitar tracks and all the covers for rock revolution so so yeah i mean the, the covers just weren't the best i there was there was uh some pretty good ones in there because i think round and round by rat it had the original singer uh, of rat on there and it sounded pretty good skater boy didn't sound too bad dance dance wasn't good dirty little secret was not good all the small things was not great and chop suey was probably one of the worst chop suey covers i've ever heard ever i feel like i should have prefaced rock revolution just with that audio and it would have spoken for itself the both the rocksmith games okay i love rocksmith rocksmith is great you've seen me play it here on the channel um a couple of times i it's the reason why i picked up bass and still play it to this day you'll end up playing a lot of the songs on these games enough to that you can just memorize and do a cover yourself they have this thing called master mode where they slowly like fade out the notes and you're eventually just doing a cover of the song that you're playing one of the greatest you know guitar learning tools of our time and i hope rocksmith plus offers enough for me to shell out money for a subscription if they're still doing that so yeah for me it's like you know middle of the pack middle of the pack a for both of these games i loved i loved the set list on both of these um you know it was just it, it it had a lot that it had a lot in common with the rock band the rock band set lists um and you know like the custom scene is fantastic also so it, there's really not much to say about those games other than it's a fantastic way to learn the real thing if you were ever curious if you're ever curious about it and you just kind of need the you kind of need to push forward go get rocksmith it's on sale like all the time and then the adapter is just you know just say like set aside 30 bucks set aside 30 bucks it's not like a full-on 60 dollars game anymore rocksmith 2014 goes on sale for like seven dollars eight dollars now last but certainly not least we got beatles rock band it was the first band centric rock band game and you could tell that Harmonix wanted to take their damn sweet time with this. I'm pretty sure they did get a blessing from, from Paul McCartney. And he was like, yo, I love seeing my young self on here and playing the instruments along to the music and, and all that stuff. I think he was at E3 at some point talking about it. I, I might be wrong. Day Tripper, Twist and Shout, I Am the Walrus, no, Yellow Submarine, Taxman, USSR, Helter Skelter, Get Back, Dear Prudence. The dreamscapes that they had in this game were beautiful. You could tell how much attention to detail that they put to this and they really brought you know a lot of the concepts to life that you know they were you know the Beatles were trying to go for in their music and uh, you know also in their in their album art and whatnot is really 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 cool if you're a big Beatles fan definitely check out Beatles rock band I mean I you know it was kind of a one and done for me on guitar it wasn't you know it wasn't the most challenging game I think the most challenging uh, song on the game for guitar was maybe helter skelter yeah and that as for that i think uh i think beatles rock rock band probably goes with the same amount of respect that i have you know the attention to detail and care and craft that they put in for guitar and metallica you know it's it's on par it's very very close you know might as well be tied oops i didn't mean to put that there but yeah uh this is my definitive for now i guess i mean i've been playing these games for 15 damn near 16 years but uh yeah this is just like my final thoughts my final tier list it's been a long time it's been a long time and i love these games a lot you know like i actually like a lot more the guitar hero and rock band games than i thought by by looking at this right now please uh please let me know what you guys want to see next this is a bit of a long video but it's one i wanted to get out for a minute so thank you guys for watching Thank you to Asphalt for sponsoring this video, and you guys have a good weekend.